Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord's visitors. Praise the Lord, anyone and everyone that is able to listen today to the Word of God. I'm grateful to have you here today. And I uh, really want to just discuss something that uh, is very important, a very common verse that is uh, seen and even read is in John chapter 14, verse 6. And today's message is, what is Jesus offering in himself? What is in Jesus? What is he offering to us? And what is it that we need to understand about his offering and what he is offering? So if you would, just turn to John 14 and verse 6. And as you're turning there, I want to go ahead and just let's spend some time just in prayer, getting our hearts and our minds right before God so that we can make and create our heart, our heart just fertile ground for the Word of God so that when the seed is planted, it can grow. We can get rid of all the weeds and the things, the thoughts, get rid of our mindset and actually put on the mind of Christ. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, Lord, we just thank you. We love you. We're so grateful for the word that you have given. Lord, we're thankful because your word became flesh and blood and it came here on this earth to make a sacrifice for us. And it's at this time right now that we bind and shackle the works of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your spirit would be loosed right now upon this very message. Lord, that these lips of clay would, would decrease and that, Lord, your words would come forth. It's all in the precious and the most holy name that we know of in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Very glad to see that you're here today. So what exactly is in Jesus? What, what's, what is he offering? What's in Christ that he's offering us? And so a very common verse that, that we have is in John 14 and 6. I dare to say that most of you have heard this verse. And we're going to go into the three things that he says that he is. In John 14 and 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Three things. The way the truth and the life and then he said no man cometh unto the father but by me so with this said i want to look at the three aspects of things that he said that he is and what he's providing what is in christ it's the way the truth and the life now what's interesting is the the disciples were with him and this, re this response that he gave was as a result of him talking about leaving and going somewhere. So if you look at the beginning of the chapter in John 14 and 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And he's going to re reveal some things here in a little bit. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. What's already present in heaven? What's in there? In my father's house are many what? Mansions. I've been to so many funerals. I've heard this priest at so many places. And what they do is, watch this. We're going to read a little further. They're going to say how God is going to make you your own individual mansion. See if that's what it says here. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Now, he didn't say, I'm going to prepare mansions for each and individual person on the earth today that, that obey the gospel. He never said that. He never said that at all. Matter of fact, we are his bride. How many of you are going to have a bride, and you're going to stay married, and guess what? The bride is going to go stay somewhere else. You're going to make a house for her, and she's going to live somewhere else. He said that in the Father's house, there were already mansions. I'm just clarifying this. This is a freebie. It didn't say, I'm going to prepare you a mansion. He didn't say that. He said, I'm going, and there's a mystery behind even this, what he meant by preparing a place. See, when two people get married, the two people become one. Hallelujah. They become one body. That They, they dwell together. So this is a farce, but what is he saying? He said this, though. He says, where I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Now, what's interesting about this was in John 8, a few chapters earlier, he had told the Pharisees something, and we've dealt with this a few times here over the last several weeks, but I want you to see this. He talked about something about this way, where he was going. So in this, he said this in verse uh, 21, John 8 and 21. Watch this. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. Remember, he said he is the way. He says, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die 
in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he says, whither I go, you cannot come. And he saith unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Who is he? He's God. Look at this. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Well, how could they possibly die in their sins? Well, that's answered in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. If you look in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, there's something peculiar about where sin goes. In 1 Corinthians, excuse me here, 15 and verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Wait a minute, why is it flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Well, that's also answer two in uh, Colossians chapter 2. Uh, just bear with me. I, I, I believe in using the Word of God to explain things. It's, it's better than me trying to explain them because the Word of God is a living book. This book explains itself. But it's like a, a old miner that's, that's, that's filtering through. He's sifting through the water to find the gold nuggets. It's, it's in here. Let me see. Galatians, Galatians, uh, Colossians chapter 2. Watch this. It says... Uh, Verse 11, Colossians 2 and 11. Watch this. He says, uh, or verse 10, we'll start in here. Uh, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We're talking about Jesus. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through a faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So what is this, all this time that they had circumcision, what was it? It was a cutting away of the seed of, of Adam. Because what? It represented sin. Sin had entered in, and guess what happened? Now that needed to be thrown away. How many of you know that your body needs to be thrown away? Your body is going to go back to the dust. And if you don't have a new covering then you're going to appear before God naked and you'll be ashamed because your sin is going to go before you. So this is part of what he was saying. He said, I am the way. He says, he said, if you don't believe I'm he, then you're going to die in your sins. Because once you believe who he is, which is God with us, he's Emmanuel, he is God himself, and he's here, and he's here to provide sacrifice, which without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or payment for sin, so he's coming to pay for sin and provide a new covering for you. And this is what is the way. Hallelujah. Uh, look in, uh, matter of fact, and so remember Jesus used to say, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. He would always say, he was saying this numerous times, he, who has, he that has an ear, let him hear. Why was it? Because there was something special going on about why he was even saying that. Because in the Old Testament, they always had prophets. But something different happened. If you go to Hebrews chapter 1, I want you to see something. This is something I just want to bring up. In Hebrews chapter 1, I want you to see a little mystery about who Jesus is. Now, have any of you ever taken a picture? If you took a picture right now of me and you showed it to somebody, and they'll say, who is that? And you say, well, that's Ray. That would be an image of who? Me. Watch at the wording here in Hebrews chapter 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So how did he speak to them in the Old Testament? By the prophets. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Watch this, verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. How did the worlds get made? The word of God was spoken. So watch this. Who being the brightness of his glory... And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. What was this all about? It was an object lesson. It was something to teach us that Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us, was God himself that came. And guess what he was doing? He talked to us by the prophets. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And guess what? Now himself, he is present. And he says, you got to believe who I am or you're going to die in your sins. 
very powerful. So he's the way. Where is he the way to? It's obviously to a heavenly place. It's obviously to a place of eternity where we have eternal life and we become one with him in marriage. This is what this is all about. This is why it's considered a great mystery in, in Ephesians chapter 5 about how a husband and, and wife, when they come together, they become one. And he talks about Christ and the church. This is a great, not a small mystery, a great mystery. Hallelujah. All right. So what about uh, the truth? He said, I am the way, but he says, I am the truth. You know what? In today's society right now, I'm telling you, with all the elections going on and everything else, I'm just here to tell you that everybody's got a sparse. They got something about this and they got something about that. Same thing when I tell you about diets. If you're on the keto diet, this is how everything is going to be great for you. I'm telling you, and if you're on this particular diet and you only eat plants, never eat meat, blah, blah, blah. This is going to be great for you. And they can give you data on all of that. But I'm here to tell you, the only truth that I know of is Jesus. It's his word. That's the only thing I know. That is the only thing that I know that is the truth. So when he says he's the truth, why is it that the truth is what he's saying? What is it? Because did you know God wanted to be worshipped a certain way? And if you look in John chapter 8, go to John, I'm sorry, John chapter uh, 4, I believe it is. Let me look. Let me look. I've got to make sure. I don't want to tell you wrong, but I think it's in John 4. Pretty sure it is. All right, John 4, because he was dealing with the Samaritan woman. Yeah, go to John 4 and verse 16. Watch this. Now, I want you to see the dialogue. Now, Jesus said he's the what? I'm the way, but he also said, I am the truth. Just like Satan, it says he's the. he only does what he does because he's the father of what? All lies. Well, who's the father of all truth? Jesus. He's the truth. Only truth can come by him. So watch this. He's, he's checking something here. Watch this in John 4, 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that thou said, thou telling the truth. Say it's the truth. He just checked her. She doesn't have to tell him anything. She could have said, that's none of your business. But guess what? She was willing to be honest with Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us. When you get honest with God, it's amazing how honest, because all he is is truth. Watch this. The woman saith unto him, verse 19, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, now watch this, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Watch this. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now watch this. But the hour cometh, and now and now is when the true worshipers, now if there's true worshipers, what else is there? False worshipers. He said, now is of the time. Look, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father. How? In spirit and in truth, the Father seeketh such, such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must Worship him in spirit and in truth. So Jesus said, I am the way. He also said that I am the truth. How is it that God wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth? Well, God's spirit cannot inhabit and stay in you if, guess what, you're not in truth. But what is truth? Well, I'm glad you asked, because in the same book, it tells us. I'm telling you, the Bible just, it, John 17, 17. Watch this. Go to John 17, 17. And what was the truth going to do? The truth is, well, we'll see what the truth is. I want you to see what it is, and then we're going to see how the mystery begins to unravel. The, the scriptures continue to speak the same thing over and over and over and over again. Watch this. It says, uh, uh, well, in verse 17, John 17, 17, it says, look, He's praying. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word 
is truth. What does it mean to be sanctified? To be sanctified means that you're made holy. But wait a minute. He said, thy word is truth. Now, we just saw that God wants people to worship him. And God is a spirit, but he wants them to worship him in spirit. Notice what he's saying. Worship him in spirit and in truth. But God is a spirit. How are you ever going to have your sins paid for? Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. What did Abraham say? He said God himself will provide a sacrifice. Because his son asked him, where's the sacrifice? I see the wood, I see, I see the fire, I, see if, I don't see the sacrifice. And prophetically, what does he say? God himself will provide a sacrifice. Now what's interesting is, he says here in John 4, that to the Samaritan woman, he said that God is a spirit. He wants people to worship him in spirit and in truth. But there's no way for us to get out of this fleshly nature of ours without first dying and then being born again. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and then guess what? The life. So he's going to make us holy by the word. What does it say? Sanctify them. Make them holy through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, what was made flesh and blood among us? The word of God. And the word in look in the beginning of this book. Look what it says. Oh, who, who is the word of God? This is why he was Emmanuel, God with us. Watch this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So who's Jesus? He's God. Watch this. The same was in the beginning with God. Remember, everything was made by the word of God. This is why in Genesis 3, when it talks about it, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. It didn't say they, they saw God. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. See, God had not manifested himself yet in flesh, in bone, in body. Watch this. Because he was waiting for the right time to do so. Look, it says, verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. And the light shineth in darkness, and the dark... Darkness comprehended it not. When we get down to verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Get down to verse 14. And the word, which is truth, right? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. How about that? So now... God who's seeking those to worship him in spirit and in truth, what has to happen is I have to receive the spirit of God, but I also have to be in truth. And the only way I can be in truth is to be sanctified by the truth because the truth is what's going to set you free. Jesus said this also in, uh, in John chapter 8. He talks about you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It'll make you free. But they said, we're not even slaves. But everybody that sinned is a slave to sin. Isn't that interesting? You see, God had to come himself because I want you to look at Isaiah 59. Watch this. In Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59, let's see here. Bear with me. I still like holding the Bible. I still like going because these pages are just, just wonderful. I, I, I see other things sometimes and it makes it so good just to be able to see everything. Sometimes on the little phone, when I'm using the phone, I don't get to see everything. Oh, let's see. Hallelujah. Look, in Isaiah 59, watch this. Watch whose hand we're talking about here. 59 verse 1. It said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. So we're talking about God himself saving something. Write this. He says, Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Okay, so he can hear. But is there something that separates us from not being heard of God? Watch this. But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. We're not going to go through all of this. It, but it says in the end of this, when you get uh, in verse 16, this is something that God did. Look at this. 
Uh, verse 15, yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it. Who saw it? The one God that we know of, the one true and living God. God sees it. Watch this. He saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no judgment. Mm. So what does he do? Watch this. And he saw that there was no man. Notice there's no man. And wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm, that's, that's him, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness sustained him. For he, God, put on righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation, and upon his, upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Jesus said, I've come in my Father's name. What is the name of the Lord? This was another mystery that was kept hidden. Watch this. It says, they will fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When, he, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And we can go on and on. What is this? He is, guess what? The truth. He's the way. What is he doing? He's making this way. He's making things right. This is the way that he was, he, was, he was giving us what we needed in order to do this. But he wanted us to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. But he couldn't until, guess what? He made a way for us. This is why Moses, Moses was what? Moses was a deliverer. Moses actually did what? Moses, he helped the children of Israel being led by God to get them out of bondage from Pharaoh, which is a type and a foreshadowing of what Jesus did. Moses said this. He said, there's going to be a prophet like unto me that's going to come. Him you listen to. This is why the Pharisees even asked. You know, they were so caught into Moses. And Jesus, when he tells them, he says, Moses, whom you put your trust. What? He's talking about Moses. Spoke of my day. Why? Because the true deliverer was going to come that would lead us out of the bondage of sin that we're in right now. What's in Jesus? He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth that will set you free. You shall know the truth. I guess we need to read that. In John 8, go, go to John 8. We need to read this, I think. I think the Lord's showing me. We need to read it. This is, we're dealing with the three things that Jesus said is in himself, what he's offering. In John chapter 8, uh, let me see. Uh, look in verse 31. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, wait a minute, that means being in truth because he is the truth. If you continue in my word, because the word was made flesh, this is how you can, this is how you can watch this, become his disciple. He said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free from what? from sin and death, because in him was the way, the truth, and the life. Watch this. Verse 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant, he's the slave of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the sun abideth ever. See, we don't. our bodies are considered houses. And if we're a slave to sin, and that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and we have to put off the body of sins, according to Colossians 2, we're not going to stay in this house forever. So that becomes an issue. How is it that I can inherit the kingdom of God? I'm not going to stay in my house forever. Jesus is offering this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And God wants you to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. But if you are still in this body of sin, you're not in truth. And it'll be just like he told the Pharisees. He says, I go my way and you cannot come. If you don't believe who I am, he says, you're going to die in your sins. How can you die in your sins if you've never put off the body of sins? Like it says in Colossians chapter 2. But he says you're going to know the truth and the truth will make you free. What's it going to make you free from? Being a servant to sin. So notice what he says. He said the servant doesn't abide in his house forever, but the son abides forever. Who is the son? Remember, he's the word. And what is the word? The word is truth. 
And what does this word do? Sanctify them by thy truth. So he was coming to make us holy. And what's interesting is, when does the word of God rot? When does the word of God decay? It doesn't. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord endures forever. He's coming to offer us an ability to become one with him. And then guess what? If we're one with him, that means we have put off this body of sin. And what do we put on? We put on Christ. We're putting on his body. We're being married with him. He said, I go prepare to prepare a place for you that where I am, then you may be also. He didn't say, I'm going to prepare you a mansion for yourself so you can go sit up, watch cable TV in heaven and do that. No, we should be in love with him and want to spend our time with him. Let me give you a little revelation. Do you know why we're not seeing truly a revival right now in America? I'm going to tell you why. Have you ever met couples that are new, they're young, this and that? What usually happens? Aren't they intimate? Aren't they spending time with each other? Aren't they doing the, And what usually happens when there's all this time and intimacy together? Babies start being born. Do you want to see revival in America? Revival, some of those you listening in India and places right now, Ethiopia. Some of these places that are listening, anywhere in the world that you start listening to this message. I just want you to know, you want to see revival, there has to be intimacy with God. How is it possible that we could ever have any children if there's no intimacy? See, we're so narcissistic with God. We're the bride that's narcissistic. What we are is we are saying, God, what about me? And yet he's already done everything and more. And yet we're still concerned about who? No, this is why he came the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, all of the world is subjected to him. And guess what he does? He comes here in the form of a servant, humbling himself so that he could redeem us, so that he could have a bride. And that's the example. This is why we put others above ourselves. Hallelujah. We, we, by, by serving God, I'm putting others above me. I'm, I'm, I'm putting God first by putting others and saying, no, it's not about me. Let me serve you. Let me tell you that there is power in servitude. There is power in humility. And when God himself comes to this earth and he comes as a form of a servant, can you imagine today? Can you imagine today Jesus washing your feet? The king, I mean, there's nobody on this planet right now that can ever and ever could have compared with God. And yet God humbled himself and was willing to wash feet. Why? To show the power in servitude, the power in putting things in perspective. Guess what? The, the world's pyramid is like this. Everybody wants to get to the top. God's is like this. It's just the opposite. You want to be great, become the least. Everything that you see in the world, whatever the world is after and chasing after, God is saying, I'm the opposite. There's a reason for that. It's because Satan himself is all about himself. He's all about himself. And guess what? That is what appeals to your flesh. Your flesh loves it. Do you notice that you've never actually had to teach a child to be selfish? Have you ever had to teach a child, look, 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 hey, this is yours. You need to fight for it. And you give them, let's say this is a toy. Do you ever have to teach a child to be selfish? No. God showed me this a long time ago. Guess what? Why do you not, ha why do you have to teach a child to share? But you don't have to teach them to hoard things and, and mine, mine. No. Ah! Why do you not have to teach a child this? Let me, let me give you some, some revelation that God has given me on this. What was man made from? What was Adam made from? He was made from the dust of the earth. Does anybody know a property of the earth? I'm going to show you one of the properties right now. The earth has this thing called gravity. Watch this. Why did the pin come back down? Because guess what? The earth is constantly doing what? Drawing things back to itself. And this is the nature of the earth. 
Now, isn't it interesting that you don't have to teach a child to become selfish? Mine, mine, eh. It's because, guess what? They are merely acting out the nature of the substance that they're made from. When we put off this fleshly body and we put on Christ, which is the Word of God, the living Word of God, our nature should change to where we serve, where we're not me, 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 me. We begin to serve. You see, that's what is missing today. Any, I guarantee you, if we talk right now, just business, do you know what people are going to say? Customer service is terrible. Customer what? Service. Why is it terrible? Because people are not interested. Why do you have to go into these, these I know some of you are not going to know the store I'm talking about from different parts of the world, but there's a Walmart here. Very huge store, department store. Has all kinds of grocery store, all these things. And they have these vests. They make the employees, watch this, they make the employees wear a vest and on the back, do you know what it says? How may I help you? Do you know why they have to put that on the vest? Because customer service is so piss poor. People are not oriented to serve. But when you are in the word of God, when you are born again, your mindset changes to do what? Become a servant. We only are, we, we are no greater than our master Jesus, God himself. And God himself came as a servant. So this is what, I'm telling you now, if you had a bunch of Bible-believing uh, people that are in the word of God and you have a company, I'm here to tell you that company for customer service will be bar none. You couldn't touch it if they're operating in the principles of the word of God. This is one reason why, too, when a believer is, is brought on board to a corporation or a company or business or entity, that believer also brings with them the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So with this said, he, wa he wanted to sanctify us with truth. He wanted us, he said, God is seeking such to worship him in spirit and in truth. I can't have the spirit of God if I don't have the truth of God. Because guess what? I need a new covering. This body, I guarantee you, will go back to the dirt. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I guess I need to read that. We've been reading it. I want you to see this. These are This is a, a, a mystery, but for whatever reason, people are not really teaching on this. And, and this is what's important because you've got to understand there's a day coming when your body is going to go back to this, this earth. And guess what? You better have a new covering. You better be in truth. And I'm not talking about because you read the Bible. I'm talking about because you put the Bible on. You better be in Christ, the word that was made flesh. Remember, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth in John 17, 17. So watch what it says in 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Where did Jesus say he was from? I'm from above. You're from beneath. He's from where? He's from heaven. Watch this. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality or death might be swallowed up of life. So wait a minute. Mortality might be swallowed up. Where is death? It's in our bodies. Paul said, who will deliver me from this body of death? Why? Because it's full of sin. This is what's separating me from God. This is why God himself came to provide a new clothing, a new attire. See, Adam and Eve in the garden were not ashamed prior to sinning, prior to eating the fruit. They were like every other creature on this earth. There's, I don't know of any creatures that make clothes for themselves today. We're the only ones. I don't know that they're changing garments and they're sewing and making new suits. and this. And that. Why is it that humanity makes clothing? It's because shame entered when sin entered. That's what God does. Guess what? He's he, he going to give us this new mindset. He's going to give us this new clothing. We won't be ashamed because guess what? We're in him and he's pardoned us. Hallelujah, because when we are with him, guess what? There'll be no reason to be ashamed. He will have changed us into his likeness. We will have by faith put on his body. We will have become one with him. 
This is what all of the all of these things in the New Testament it says in Galatians were are this the the whole entire Old Testament was a school teacher to bring us to who? Christ. Everything that took place was to bring us to Christ. It was a school teacher. You want to understand the word of God more? Let me tell you something. Read the word of God and start looking for Christ in what you're reading in the Old Testament. It's going to always be there. Always, 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 always. Hallelujah. Let's keep looking a little further. Look in, because we're dealing with the truth. Look in 2 Timothy chapter 2. If you go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, I want you to see something. I want you to see a little bit more about the truth. There we go. I'm getting there. I'm slow. 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 24. Yeah. Watch this. And it's talking about the preacher. It says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, watch this, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You remember the Samaritan woman? The Samaritan woman, he said, go and call thy husband. And she didn't have to tell him the truth, but she's looking at truth eye to eye because Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth. When she sees him, she just says, I don't have a husband. And he says, you've, you've well said. Because you've had five husbands. And the man that you're with right now, he's not your husband. You've said the truth. And then what does he do? Because she has a love for the truth. She doesn't know him. But she's looking at truth in the eyes. And guess what? She just tells him the truth. There were people that looked Jesus in the eye and lied to him. What's the difference? And there was a difference in the revelation that she received. She received, she said, well, I know that there's one day that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to tell us everything. And what did he do? He gave her a mystery and a parable. No, he says, I who am talking to you am he. <gasps> you see, it's amazing when you get honest with God that the truth is just right there. Hallelujah. So look at this. He says that peradventure, God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. What is the truth? Who is the truth? What do you need to acknowledge? Hallelujah. You need to acknowledge Jesus, that who is he? He's God. He's God who came in the flesh. He's God who is, is doing what? He's providing you with a way, because he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's providing you a way, but you can't get on this way without the truth, because the truth is what needs to sanctify you and make you holy. And then you can't have life, which the life-giving spirit, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, we'll talk about that, the quickening spirit. He can't give you all of these things if you're not in him. And it took him to give us all of these things. Watch this. And that they may recover themselves, verse 26, that 2 Timothy 2, 26, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Hallelujah. All right. Let's, let's look at another place. Um, 2 Thessalonians. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 and verse 7. Watch this. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Watch this. And then shall the wicked be revealed, that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. See, his mouth is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Watch this. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And watch this. Now, this is important. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you have a love for the truth? Well, you better love Jesus because he said, I am the way and I am the truth. But he's also the life. Once you know who he is, once you've been revealed and you're in the word, you actually have the opportunity to become one of the true worshipers. There's plenty of people on the planet Earth right now that are false worshipers because they're not worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I pray that, that you would receive this. Now, let's just look quickly at the life. The life. So, in 2 Corinthians, let me go back to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 
13, I want to look at a couple things. How is it that Jesus is the life? How is he the life? Well, because we had sin against us, and so we needed to be reconciled. It's like doing a checkbook. You've got to reconcile everything. When you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, let me see here. 17, there we go. Yeah, 17. Watch this. Now, watch what he says here. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're going to go back and read that passage then and see if we get some more understanding out of this. Look at look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Uh-oh. So you have to be in Christ. Why? You can't be in him because he said, I'm going my way and where I'm going, you can't come. Unless you believe I am he, you're going to die in your sins. So watch what it says. Where do you need to be? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Ah, watch this. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this, verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to someone else. No, reconciling the world unto himself. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me, God, when you saw Jesus, you were saying, oh, that's right. That's why he was called Emmanuel, God with us. Watch this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin. Who? Jesus. For us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God wants us, he wants true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. What was truth? Thy word is truth. He said, sanctify them by thy truth. How is he going to sanctify? He made him, for he made him to be sin for us. The word of God that was made flesh was made to be sin. The sins of the world were placed upon him. And he made a payment. Hallelujah. Uh, Matter of fact, while we're here in first uh, in Second Corinthians 15, we might as well hop back over to First Corinthians 15, just a few pages over, so you can see what I was talking about when I say that 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 there was a spirit. Jesus is this life-giving spirit. Watch this in verse 45 of First Corinthians 15:45. Watch this, and since so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last man uh, Adam, the last Adam, was made a quickening spirit. What is this quickening spirit? You see, God breathed life into Adam. And he became an eternal being. But God is the one that had to breathe the life into Adam. But when Jesus came, who was God, he's the quickening spirit that is wanting to fill us with his spirit. He's the quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Where's Jesus from? What did he tell the Pharisees in John chapter 8? He said, I go my way. He says, I'm from, you're from beneath. I'm from above. He's telling, here it is again. Look at this. The first man is of the earth and earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now watch this. This is you and me here. Watch this. And if you believed, watch this. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. That's every last one of us right now on the earth. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. We're referring to Jesus now. Watch this. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, that's you and me, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Why? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I can't be sanctified without the truth. And it was the word that was made flesh. Because sin has to have a blood payment. Without the shedding of blood, there is no payment for sin. And because of this, because God came in the flesh, he's providing for us clothing to put on 
that when this body goes back to the earth, we're not found naked. And now we have life once he fills us with his spirit. I now, I got the full benefit of Jesus, which is guess what? The way, the way we're to heaven. I've got the truth which set me free from sin, which also sanctified me before God, where he did not impute sin to me anymore. It was taken and put on Christ. And then guess what? I have life eternal with him. You see, everything that's going to happen to everyone that has lived on this earth is eternal. Either you will die eternally or you will live eternally. So last place I'm going to read. Last place that I'm going to read. Because he said he is the life. But you, I say last place. I, I'm, I'm assuming I am. I, the Lord may show me one more to read. I don't know. I just got to be, I got to be obedient to what God tells me. Amen. If you go to Galatians 2 and verse 20, watch what it says. This is, this, is, this is a little bit of everything here, but watch this. This is about the life. Watch this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now, which I now live in the flesh, that's right now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wait a minute. The life I'm living now, I'm not even living. Guess what? I needed the faith to be able to follow him as the way, the truth, and the life. But now, because I've mixed my faith with the word of God and I've become one with him, guess what it just said there? I'm now living by the faith, God's faith. Oh, I hope you can receive that. That is pretty powerful. So, what does the enemy want to make sure that you understand is that you don't understand the power of God that he has made with you when you become one with him. He's given you the faith to be able to remove mountains. He's given you the faith that would bring glory to him. He wants us to bring glory to him because we're participating in the glory, which is the putting on of Christ. Because that's why it talks about we beheld his glory in John 1 as the only begotten of the Father. When we put on Christ, okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, matter of fact, while we're right here in Galatians, hold on, Galatians 3, 27 is, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's the word of God. Go, go to John chapter 1. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. We're going to, we're going to, I feel it, Lord. I feel it. In John 1 and 14, it says, uh, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When you see Jesus, He was grace. He was truth. He was full of it. He was not only full of it. He was the truth that was going to be used to sanctify us. And when we put on Christ, we're putting on, guess what? His grace. We're putting on. This is the glory. Watch this. Hallelujah. It says we beheld his glory. Now that we put on Christ, we have put on his glory. And what is God expecting out of that? Go to second. I'm glad you asked. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. I want you to see this. Please see this. Please see this. Please, please understand this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Hallelujah. For all the promises of God, for all the promises of God in him, that's Jesus, in him are yea, and in him, amen. Now watch this though, you'll miss it. Unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen, let it be so. Why? Unto the glory of God by us. How is it that God could receive glory from a man? He can't. But when you put on Christ, what have you put on? You've put on the glory of God. You're operating in the word of God. And what are you doing by serving him, by following him? You're bringing glory to him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is Christ offering in himself? He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. I'm here to tell you there's only one way into heaven. I know a lot of people are teaching and preaching different things, but there's only one way in the kingdom of God. There's only one message that's ever been preached in the kingdom of God. I know there's a lot of people, and I like to read this, and I like people to compare how they say they were saved. Now listen, those of you that said a prayer and you say that you're saved now, I want you to follow along. See if this sounds like salvation, the way you were saved, because there's only one way. In Acts 2 and 37, Peter had got up. There had been this, this revelation of telling the Jewish people that they had crucified their Messiah. And they were pricked in their heart because they knew what he said. They knew they heard about him being resurrected. They heard all these things. Now watch this. In verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. You may be being pricked in your heart now. Watch this. And he said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They want to know how to be saved. I hope you're asking that right now. Watch this. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. What is repentance? It's dying. You can't be born again without dying. So you've got to die. And then it says to do what? Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the payment of your sins. When you are baptized in the name of Jesus, if you remember what we were, if you've been following me since the beginning of this message, in Colossians 2, it says that we put off the body of sins by being baptized in him. It's an operation of God. He cuts away this body. What is he going to do? He closes us. 2 Corinthians 5 said that this house goes back to the dirt, but we have a house not made with hands that's from heaven. Who is that? That's Jesus. It's the marriage. The two shall become one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did he say? You got to repent. So you got to die first. Then you got to be buried. What is the gospel? The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And why did it say in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ? This is the form of repentance. I'm dying. I want to die now because I want to be born again. So what happens is when I repent, I die. And the life that I'm now living, it's not me. It's going to be Christ living in me. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? And then guess what? He said, when you get buried in the name of Jesus, it's for the remission. When you people get bills and it says, please remit, please pay for it. So what does it mean? You're going to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, for the payment of your sins. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, you still own your sins without being baptized in the name of Jesus upon repenting you still have your sins you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus and then you still you need to receive the Holy Ghost if a baby came out of the mother's womb but she didn't breathe is she is the baby alive no you have to receive the Spirit of God that baby has to take a breath <sighs> hallelujah I pray that you will hear this word, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that guess what? There's nobody that can go. There's, I, I promise this. I'm sorry. I did promise this. Nobody can come to the Father but through him. So guess what? There's no way to get to God without going through Jesus, which is the word, which is God. Watch this. Because guess what? What separated us in Isaiah 59 too, It says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, what did it say? It says, God was in Christ reconciling man unto himself. So let's see if this verse, these verses make sense again. In uh, John 14, watch this. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. How can he say that? Because he's God. Watch this. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Side note, he didn't say I'm going to make you and you and you and you and you your individual mansions. We're being married 
to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He wants us to dwell with him because he loves us. He says, uh, and whither I go, ye know. And the way ye know. Now watch this. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know thy, the way? Jesus said, this is the verse we're dealing with today. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who was in Christ? 2 Corinthians 5.19 said what? God was in Christ reconciling man unto himself. So who is speaking? Who is in Christ? God is, right? He said nobody can come to the Father but through me. Why? Because he's the word of God. The word of God. He said, John 17.17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Who is Jesus? He's the word of God that was manifested and made flesh. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And there's no way for you to get to God unless you go through Christ, which means he has to sanctify you. That means you have to be born again. And in order to be born again, you've got, he had to die, he had to bury, and he had to be uh, rise again. And we have to follow suit. Or we can't have, we can't be in him. This is why it said in Galatians 3.27, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You can't get into to God. You can't have a relationship with God without obeying the gospel. Now watch this, watch this. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You got to be sanctified. Watch this. If you had known me, Ye should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. Watch this. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Who is Jesus? He's Emmanuel, God with us. What did he say in Hebrews 1? In the old days, he always spoke to our fathers by the prophets. That's why when you look in the Old Testament, it was always, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. It's not in the New Testament. Because the Lord himself came and talked. It says that Jesus, he said his son, he sent his son who was the express image of his person. That's why it says in Isaiah 59, he put on the garments of vengeance. Who did? God did. Who is Jesus? He is God. Hallelujah. You can't get into heaven. You can't get into a relationship with God without the sanctification of Jesus Christ, which is God who was manifested in the flesh. Once you put on Christ, you're putting on truth. Once you're filled with the Spirit of God, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, because He takes control of your spirit. And what does He do? He begins to fill you with His Spirit, and you begin to utter these things, and you're speaking in a heavenly language. Now, let me tell you what happens. It says, now you're a true worshiper. How? Because God is seeking such to worship Him. God is the Spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit, His Spirit, speaking in, in tongues, and in truth the garment that he puts on. This is why there was the revelation that came, which was very simple. The king had made a wedding feast for his son and there was a person that did not have a wedding garment on and that wedding garment is putting on Christ. The king said, friend, how did you come in here? And he says, nothing. He was speechless. Then the king bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because he didn't have a garment on. Because there's no way for you to inherit eternal life without putting on Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine round upon you. And may this revelation make its way into your heart and that you do obey the gospel. God bless you. Thank you very much for watching.